It's time for the sandbox news. This week we have some new clothes, new maps, new website integration. The advanced audio systems are still being worked on. And there are some updates to Hammer and the tools. It doesn't look like there's any updates to Construct this week. There are some new clothes. Here we can see the Grand Ball gown. So as you might expect, it's a gown for the Grand Ball. There's also a new skin color. It's this blue grayish alien kind of look and it comes with large eyeballs. I'm in the appearance editor now, and we can actually zoom in on the character's face. We can see the other skins have slightly, oh, they're all slightly different sized pupils. Huh, I didn't notice that. I thought they were all exactly the same. That's cool. But we can see skin five, they're massive. <laughs> this guy's so shiny over here, wow. Um, there's also, this just looks so bizarre. There's also a new Hawaiian t-shirt, and I believe these are called summer shorts. If I move away from this location, maybe the character will be less shiny. Yeah, it looks like the UI rework for Unicycle Frenzy has been implemented. Time remaining. Wait, why is the time remaining counting up? Looks like pressing tab just gives me the a map vote. If I press Q, this menu looks really nice. So we can see the battle pass and the customization. So there's a new unicycle model. We can see it here. It looks a lot more detailed. There's a lot of detail on the seat, and I think this might be a break here. That's very cool. Looks like the pedals are a little glitched out right here. It's on the floor. Oh well. So these are the different unlockable items that you get through the battle pass here. And I believe you get XP for the battle pass by playing the game and doing objectives. Here we can see the controls. It looks like this is all the stuff that was in here before, but just with a new reworked UI. So top times, my times. It looks like if they have a green name, that means they're on your Steam friends list. I believe the animations have been finalized for this. So we can see there's new animations when you're swinging around. It's very cool. Nice pedaling animation. Looks like there are a couple errors. I think that's actually the flag on the checkpoint. This map here is Pop Rock. So last you've seen, it was a bunch of gray developer textures, but now it's fully detailed. This map looks great. Here's a nice overview shot. And this area seems to be the most densely detailed. So we can see there are crates and a bunch of construction tools. Now, this doesn't look very safe for a construction site, but it's a video game, so it doesn't matter. So this map looks really great. I'm really impressed by how this turned out. I really like the atmosphere and all of these cool fog particles. Let's see how far I can get on this. Uh, probably gonna crash right away. Yeah. I don't think any of the other maps have received this level of detail yet. What happens if I bone on one? Does it change the map? Oh, it gives me an error. So yeah, it looks like uh, there's still some bugs with this game, but it's looking really impressive so far. There are some updates to Surf, also known as Strafe. The biggest update is there's actually a website, so I can go to strafedb.com. It looks like I can't actually copy text from this chat box, even though I can highlight it. That's kind of weird. So I have to manually type in strafedb.com into my computer browser. Here we can see a basic website. It looks like I can toggle dark mode. It shows me all of the scores for the different strafe maps. Looks like the Owl of Life recently got a world record on easy surf map. And I can click it to see some details. It shows me the server and the map. Oh, if I click the map, it shows me the top 10 times, most recent runs, and a lot of other statistics. If I click on the time, no, what can I click on here? I can click on craze. No, this shows me the run. This shows me the world record run. And we can see the different checkpoints. Wait, does dark mode disable when I go to a different page? Oh, that's kind of weird. This website is still a very early work in progress and it just has the bare minimum right now. Here we can see the official servers where you can be ranked. You have to join one of these dedicated servers if you want your score to be counted. Otherwise you could easily cheat. Who knows, maybe you turned on time scale or you changed the gravity. But obviously you can't do that on these approved servers. So if I click it, it copied the, what I have to put into the developer console to connect. Very interesting. Wait, do they both go offline or is the website glitched? Oh, that was weird. I can join them on Discord. Is there, they made a strafe 
Discord server. Interesting, very interesting. So as an overview, we can see dashboard servers, different runs. Is this the same as the dashboard? Yeah, this is the same as the dashboard. And the different maps. Very cool, very work in progress. So I'm excited to see what comes of this. The advanced Steam audio systems are still being worked on. Here we can hear a preview from the developers. So it sounds like they're showing off audio occlusion in this demo. Here they're throwing a grenade right in front of you where you can see it. And here they're throwing it behind a wall. So it's occluded by the wall and it sounds different. There's a new debug tool for testing level of detail. So we can see in the developer menu here, we can force on different LOD levels. So that stands for level of detail. Right now I'm forcing on the highest level of detail. So everything's at maximum quality. However, I'm only getting 60 frames per second. Is that capped? Did Sandbox... I just happen to be setting at exactly 60 frames per second. If I set it to auto, then you'll see stuff in the distance becomes lower quality. Now you can't actually notice this because of how LOD works. If I set it to LOD 3, which is the lowest quality, <laughs> you, can, you can see everything looks very interesting. Oh, it looks like the post box turns into uh, a rectangle. Huh, interesting. The, oh, that one's already a triangle. This circular sign here, it turns into this. So here's what it looks like by default, and here's what it looks like on the lowest quality setting. So this is very useful for testing your models and making sure that they're set up properly. Now, for a better explanation of how this works is the further away you are from an object, the lower quality it will be. But you won't notice because it'll be so far away. So as I back up from the sign, you won't notice it unless if you're looking very carefully. But right here, you can see the sign switches from a round highish quality model to the square. Now in regular gameplay, you can't notice this. You can barely notice it right now, and that's how it's supposed to be. However, some things are a little buggy and not set up properly. Like the lot on this metal roof here, you can see when we go far away, it turns black and it looks really weird. So we can see that definitely is not set up properly. There are some updates to the hammer editor. Now some of the physics constraints can have particle effects attached to them. So for example, phase length constraint, this could be used as a simple rope, can now actually have a rope particle attached to it and it'll work. Instead of having to have two separate entities, one for the rope physics and another for the visual part. There are also some updates to the light entities. The biggest one is light flicker animations now use a curve instead of the old system, which was a string of letters. So previously, if you wanted your light entity to flicker, you would have to type in a bunch of letters, for example, A, 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 B, 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 C, 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 and stuff like that. But now we have this cool new animation curve. We can see it being shown off in this clip from the developers. So as you adjust the curve, it adjusts how bright your light is. We can see here there's a little bit of a flicker and then it turns completely off and completely back on and completely off and then resumes the flicker. Now this is actually a change to a system that's been in place for apparently over 25 years. I found this PC Gamer article that showcases it. So the old light flickering system was around since the Quake engine. Here we can see Quake, I think this is Half-Life 1, this is Half-Life 2, and this is Portal 2, and they all have the exact same light flickering pattern. Half-Life Alex had this exact same pattern too, as we can see here. Well, after 25 years, we've finally gotten a new updated system for this. So that's very exciting, very thrilling. That's it, that's all the Sandbox news. Like, comment, and subscribe, and thank you to my Patreon supporters.